My name is Kaylee, and I think by now we've all heard about the dire wolf controversy. Time released an article reporting on the return of the dire wolf. For more than a decade, scientists have chased the idea of reviving extinct species. This process is often called de-extinction. So there's this company called Colossal Biosciences, and they claim that two pups born in October of 2024 and one pup born in January of 2025 are dire wolves. They claim that they restored a once eradicated species through the science of de-extinction. But is this actually the case? Or is this just a simple case of misinformation? Unfortunately, it is the latter and they are purposefully marketing their stunt wrongly to get more attention and too many people see the headline of the Time article and they think the dire wolf is back. So let's take a quick look into it, shall we? The dire wolf belonged to the genus Enosion, with its species name being Dyrus, while the grey wolf belonged to the genus Canis, with its species name being Lupus. These two species last commonly shared an ancestor 5.7 million years ago, according to a study of ancient DNA conducted in 2021, which I will link in the description down below. So during this study, the team of scientists were able to retrieve DNA from 13,000-year-old tooth fossil of a dire wolf, and this species of wolves went extinct around 10,000 years ago. The Colossal Biosciences team used this DNA with the discovery of additional DNA from a 72,000-year-old ear bone to make a complete genome of the dire wolf. And they then edited 20 genes of grey wolves, so 20 grey wolf genes, to imbue the animal with key features of dire wolves. So the team at Colossal analyzes ancient DNA to identify the key mutation that made extinct species distinctly different from living relatives. They then engineer the DNA of a living relative and use those genes to produce viable animals. The revived animals would not be genetically identical to the extinct species, but according to Colossal, they would be identical in other crucial ways. The grey wolf genome is around 2.4 billion base pairs long, and they only edited 20 genes using CRISPR. Five of those 20 genes are based on mutations known to produce light coats in grey wolves, and only 15 gene edits are based on the dire wolf genome directly and are intended to alter the animal's size, musculature, and ear shape. No dire wolf DNA was actually used or spliced into the genomes of the grey wolf genomes that the team edited. The team of Colossal then created embryos of the edited grey wolf cells and implanted them in surrogate dog mothers and waited for them to give birth. The process resulted in three healthy pups. Apparently the surrogate mothers were doing well, they got weekly ultrasounds, but it's unclear how many failed wolf pups were created before three healthy ones had emerged. They did mention that they had created dozens of embryos and that most of the embryos failed to develop. Actually, four pups were born, but one of these pups died from a ruptured intestine about 10 days after it was born, although Colossal said that this death was not the result of a harmful mutation. All pups were born by planned cesarean section to minimize the risk of birthing complications. Two of these three healthy pups were born in October of 2024, and they are both male and have been named Romulus and Remus. And the other healthy pup was a female who was born in January of 2025 and was named Khaleesi, after the Game of Thrones character, you know, the TV show that made the dire wolf so popular. So the team admits that the new dire wolf is only a dire wolf due to the morphological species concept, meaning that if they looked like this animal, then they are this animal. Which in all actuality means that they did not use the phylogenetic species concept to determine that this species should be called a dire wolf or not. Because when we are looking at the evolutionary relationships, this could not possibly be a dire wolf. The scientists at Colossal are also working on de-extinction projects on the woolly mammoths, the dodo, and the thylacine, which is better known as the Tasmanian tiger. They have already created a woolly mouse when they copied mammoth DNA into mouse DNA, which resulted in a 
chimeric critter with the long golden coat and the accelerated fat metabolism of the mammoth. Which is weird. I don't think we needed that mouse. The team at Colossal are now calling themselves an evolutionary force at this point. They are deciding what the future of these species will be. As you can imagine, there are a lot of concerns brought up by other scientists. Risks of death risk of severe side effects, there's a huge possibility of a lot of suffering and miscarriages involved in this process. So should we even be doing this? That's the question. As I mentioned at the start of this video, Time published an article stating that the dire wolf has returned, while other news outlets like CNN and the New York Times were a bit more careful in their approach of this subject. And then we have the New Scientist's article that simply states, no, the dire wolf has not been brought back from extinction. So what do you think of this dire wolf controversy? They're not really dire wolves, but they seem to be distinctly different from the grey wolf. Did these scientists create a new species? Would you call this a dire wolf, simply because it kind of maybe looks like one? Even though we can't for sure know exactly what dire wolves looked like, because we don't have one frozen into place. And what do you think on Colossal's future endeavors? The mammoths, the dodos, Tasmanian tigers, should they continue their gene editing de-extinction program? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I don't think we needed this. I don't think we needed to bring back the dire wolf. It's been extinct for thousands of years. They also eat big game and these wolves that they created will never be able to live in the wild. So what's their future? If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, or click one of the video links in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. And yeah, this was just a quick video on the direwolf controversy. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.